when I get told to quiz, I go for this medal. So it's so you guys are mine. So you know this, full medal. Go for it, medal. Basically, people think metal they are violent, metal they are this, metal they are that. According to me, metal, they are, they are people who do metal, they are totally different, they are, they are not stereotyped. People with most tattoos, long hairs. Metal music, I am not very updated about it, but yeah, people who listen to it, I am sure it makes a lot of sense. It's not only about the noise. Metal music is very really loud, it's noise pollution. It's good to hear when you're angry, that's yeah. all Metal musics are rocking and I like it because it gives me peace of mind. Uh, metal music it's uh, one of those like genres where people like all around the world like it. Like yeah, it's a music and everybody likes it. I think metal is madness and metal brings madness to all the people who listen to metal. It shows people you know, what they really are. What if we think that they are very real? I mean, they portray themselves out. I mean, the way they feel all that, I mean, they are very violent people. What is that? They don't like stupid shit and stuff. They deal with real, real shit, man. That's what Most really friendly, they're nice, they're mellow, they're cool, they're jolly. We yeah. should actually, actually take time to like, yeah, appreciate them. Listen to it, I'm sure you will like it, man. Yeah. Metal, yeah, yeah, it's a good music. Nice. You can always head back to it. That's the general perception. I think of metal music or metal videos. Uh, I mostly tend to relate this music with antisocial activities of people because uh, you know music as a whole has uh, music can so much influence people uh, because of that listening to this type of music I feel these people try to do uh, negative things and activities in the, in the society. Uh, I'm Julian from Project Ben, the vocalist. I'm a tattoo artist. So my name is Sahil Makija. I'm better known in the local scene as Demon Stealer. Uh, I've been around for about 14 to 15 years now and I've been actively playing with Demonic Resurrection, Reptilian Death and Workshop. Uh, I also run a heavy metal cooking show, a small record label and a small studio and that's all the kind of things I do. Uh, I would say our band plays a mix of death, black and symphonic metal, so we like to call ourselves demonic metal. My name is Baribor, uh, Baribor Kupar Khongwir. Presently, uh, I'm the district planning coordinator of uh, Sarva Shiksha Abhiyan. Hey, we're still serious. And I'm Ibor, the guitarist of the band. And I'm Frankie, the drummer of the band. I'm Anderson, the vocalist. Uh, we don't limit ourselves as um, what kind of genre, but we play metal. We see, we like to explore uh, metal in such a way like um, in different different kind of platforms <coughs> so um, in my opinion uh, we do play uh, heavy kind of stuff music so like we all say like uh, music is an art so it's just depend on the person how he express it so a point of view like still serious is um, we do create heavy kind of uh, distorted uh, songs and all so it has been uh, that kind of uh, genre Listening to that kind of genre that is uh, more into kind of uh, let's say death metal and more into metal core above metal core. Uh, we are Dimbur, an experimental metal band from Shillong. Um, we've been active for the past three years. I'm Cornelius Kasanti on guitars and Mason Khan on bass. I'm Neil Latmelindo, the vocalist. We are a battle. We play metal, metal music and but very, I, I, we can't really put a pin on it because we have so many things happening in our music like from elements of thrash to progressive elements to death, uh, to, death to like death metal elements so a lot of elements are there so we are very experimental with our sound as well 
Ang nangsan lingwa ay pif ka ba ang ay pwede kita sa mga vocals. We play that matter. Well, music has always been the core. You know, I mean, it's different. It's a way of expressing. And not every not every person can digest it. So it's unique. You know, you don't have you won't see a metal head wearing a backstreet boy t shirt and going, Yay, <laughs> I'm head banging. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I don't know about others how they feel about it, but uh, metal music for me it's 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 interesting, you know, it it, it just it gets inside you and it just blows you away. <laughs> But music for me, it's it's life. Um, metal music has gotten got me through a lot of things, through a lot of hard things in life. You know, through the music, through the power which you can feel, which comes out from from the music itself. Metal music can move you like any form of music. If you're in, into any form of music, also, um, of course, I myself I'm a metalhead, but I also listen to other bands like Porcupine Tree. Uh, artists like Steven Wilson, the Ryan Maida, RDPs, they they bring a lot of uh, influence in me. But the feeling which you get from their music and the feeling which you get from metal music is is quite different. It's it's very uplifting. It gives you a lot of hope, hope to carry on. Anything at all which relates with society, you can actually relate with them. Because uh, through the lyrics, through the power, through the music itself, you know, it is not just uh, one man singing. It's like a whole band, uh, you know, taking out their emotions into their music. So you can hear, actually hear a lot of things and it's very, very intricate. Metal music, which I found is uh, very, very intricate and um, I would say the most diverse, the most diverse form of music I've ever found in my life. It can incorporate anything from even rap music to pop music to jazz to EDM to techno to anything at all. Even folk music, anything can be incorporated with metal music. What metal music me means to me is a little hard to explain. You know, it's something that I have been uh, very passionate about for the last 14 years, 14, 15 years. Um, it's very hard to pinpoint. Just something about the music was extremely gripping and it just got me in its hold and I've never let go since then. Um, for me, metal, it's like a kind of genre, like it's very hard, strong. It's a genre like people mostly, especially like um, for people who are very, uh, who are very strong. Let me say that in my opinion are very strong and for those kind of people they deserve to listen to this kind of music because they know how to handle stuff so for some who can't handle they might go to some other kind of music so for me yeah metal it's very strong and you know feeling that uh, vibes push in and you have just to release it to that kind of music so yeah metal it's, it's that way for me yes uh, metal music is like you experiment yourself you know in what like when you are in a metal, you try to exper experiment yourself. Like when you are good in that particular instrument, like you try to grow up with that one. So metal is, is, is like you experiment yourself, you discover yourself. That is, I think, the quality you have in, <coughs> in yourself. On my side, I think it's my passion. Yeah. I'm so into metal. Right from when I was in class nine, I was in metal. And I love it. That's all. And I started to like metal because it's, I don't know, it, it makes you feel something inside you, you know? It, when you're angry, you don't have to go break houses or beat up people or something. I just listen to metal. It, 
gives you hope, like I said, gives you hope, gives you that energy. And we had bang and, <laughs> and stuff, so it's like uh, letting out all the frustration. Okay, my journey for, basically I would say my journey for the love of music came from my parents itself. Uh, they were the ones who introduced uh, me into great bands like Queen, Led Zeppelin, then Black Sabbath, uh, even uh, psychedelic rock bands like Pink Floyd, Yes, then Rush and all those kind of bands. Uh, my mother and father played a huge role in in making me get into these kind of music, you know, uh, unlike, of course, my parents listened to bands like ABBA, they listened to, you know, those 80s pop, 70s pop, but I wasn't that much into them. I was more into, you know, like intricate music making, like uh, melodies, th those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, after that, after that, uh, that was when I was in my primary school stage. So after that, um, I started listening to bands, heavier bands. I wouldn't consider them heavy metal, maybe alternative metal. Uh, bands like, uh, you know, uh, Filter, then uh, bands like Rock Zombie, then, uh, then White Zombie, those kind of bands. Even bands like Tonic, Foo Fighters, they played some kind of, uh, they lit that interest in me. Then later in life, um, when I came back to Shillong from signing school, I was into bands like uh, Deftones, Korn, maybe those uh, those were the bands, they were easy to listen to, but they made me develop that love in, in heavy music due to their crunching guitar sounds, you know, their drums and stuff like that. They were heavier than, than uh, Filter and all those other bands I used to listen to. So then after that, I met, I'm, I made friends with, uh, with, with a lot of people, most of them uh, who we share the same interests with and they started introducing me to other bands, heavier, heavier bands like Cannibal Corpse, Dayside, then, uh, you know, black metal, death metal, even doom metal. So that's how I, that love started growing in me. Actually, the biggest support I've ever had in my life were from my parents themselves. Uh, during our gig last year, um, we had one gig where my parents actually came to the show and they showed the support for the whole band. Um, come to think about it, when I was younger and I used to play these uh, these cassettes, uh, cassettes by bands uh, like Stained, like Cold, uh, those, uh, you know, Korn, even Korn, even Slipknot, even Slipknot, a lot of guys during my age were into Slipknot. My mom used to like a couple of songs from them and she used to actually tell me like, son, there's one song which, which is really catchy, can you play that song again? By that band, that band which starts with a Slipknot or something, so... They were huge supporters. My band actually loves, um, actually my mom actually loves uh, a band uh, known as Chin of Bottom, which you might know. She She's quite into like a couple of songs by those guys. Even to switch and gauge, those kind of bands. It's getting out of the yeah! 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 Well, Shillong is a beautiful place, you know. Uh, there are some good metal bands here in Shillong. Uh, I would obviously be nice to see the bands get together and you know sort of build the scene here up a little more you know I think there's great potential here to have a healthy scene where bands can come and tour and I think if it's just the bands who you know take the initiative and get together and create a community of metalheads in Shillong they can put together shows I mean Dying Fetus was here recently so obviously Shillong is a happening place for metal so I, I look forward to coming and playing in Shillong you know, we've had a bit of a unlucky streak with DR. The last two times we came here, we got to play two songs and four songs. But hopefully we will come back soon and get to play a full set, you know, because Shillong has crazy metal heads. They're very passionate about the music. Now, the metal scene in Shillong especially it has grown a lot. What we had back then was a bunch of friends, people we know from here and there coming to our gigs. And we barely got paid. <laughs> so for us, it was the love of music, as in like, you know, we love what we did at that time. We started off with a different genre of a band, then we slowly turned into a technical death metal band. So for us, it was, yeah, basically it was the love of music and we just enjoyed being on stage and doing what we love. So. Yeah, the metal scene, it was really low at that time. You know, you barely had a crowd of, say, 
150, 200 people, that would be like, whoa, man, that's a big turnout. <laughs> but yeah, we we struggled a lot. Recording was not possible. We had a lot of uh, original stuff thrown away because we didn't have the equipment to record at that time. And since we were all dependent on each other, you know, we had our own things to do, so we couldn't uh, get any financial help or anything to progress. See, metal now has really grown. It, it's really grown so much that uh, we're really surprised to see people uh, actually, you know, coming into gigs so much. And these new kids nowadays, they're very talented and stuff. And apart from Shillong, uh, I've seen gigs in Delhi, uh, Guwahati, we've done gigs there. So at that time, in Guwahati, I did go for a gig, but uh, not in Delhi. Delhi was uh, with Richmond, the previous focus. So yeah, I was there for the show though. It was a good turnout. People really enjoy us as a band because it was something different, I guess. <laughs> So, um, from my side, uh, being in the stage, I mean, um, it's uh, especially when you see local people, when they recognize your talent, they come to your show and all. It's, it's like it means so much for us, you know. And especially when people talk about the band, talk about what we're doing, they still love to support us. That 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 has always been a you know um, a motivation. So. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, the local people like they love music, but they don't want to spend it. So that has always been a problem, you know. So they always want free ticket, free. Like, always free, you know. While playing, the, uh, as soon as they hear the free concert, they'll come. But when you say about asking ticket for just one hundred bucks, uh, they will they will give many excuses, you know. Many excuses will come up. So okay, the, uh, when it comes to um, people in general. Especially the metalheads in Shillong. Yeah, we love them so much. I mean, they have always been the one who support us. So I, I would like to say that um, if uh, if they are not from the people, I mean from the people who love our music, and we will not be here. I mean, that's a kind of response for people, in, especially local talent. So nowadays we can see that uh, it's been growing. And uh, many people have been uh, like, uh, you know, um, what to say. Uh, they even uh, love <coughs> to be include themselves in the show and all. So it's been a great thing happening for, especially for the local scene. You know, it's been like been boosting up. I mean, the people out here they are more like uh, educated, like in terms of. Uh, I mean, like musically, you know. I mean, like uh, in in a practical way, they are like more educated and they know much more stuff. So People outside, yeah, they are, I mean, like, they are in, educated into metal music in a different way. Like, there's lot of, uh, lots of difference between the metal heads here in Shillong and outside. original music coming up right now and people have started taking their work seriously it's not like before that like you just come up with a band and you just play cover tracks and all that and you're done <laughs> yeah uh, evolution like uh, though it came very late to so long uh, I think 
in the last few years, especially in the last two years, like brands have become, we've seen a very positive change when it comes to people going for concerts, for these metal gigs, or for when it comes to bands as well. You know, the, the bands are becoming more serious. And they are, like Jerry said, they are writing more original songs. So it's, it's towards a good change so far. I've done very few metal bands actually. Very, very less actually, you know. It's not like now. But before, actually, that time, when I first joined the, when I first joined Project Ben, I started off with uh, the bass. And I took a break. <laughs> then later on, I joined, I started playing the guitars. And finally, uh, it was up till uh, 2007, I think, yeah, 2007, I started playing drums. So, back then, it was, uh, not many people were into metal actually. Like, uh, they, you, you might have had uh, listeners and all, but not many, not many musicians actually played metal during that thing. Mm, because, yeah, there was no market actually when it comes to. If you're a metal band, that means you had no gigs whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> there will be like you'll play one gig a year during that time if you're a metal band, if you're in a metal band. Well, there weren't actually a metal scene before. They mostly cover bands who they play rock and mostly fades. There are metal bands, metal gigs, but there are like two, three bands. But they're like, you know, there would be 50 to 20 people and and most of the people there, they won't understand what the band is playing. So unlike now, now you have around 500 people who actually, you know, appreciate uh, metal bands and people who listen to that kind of music. For the past three years, we've been writing songs about uh, ourselves, about our band, the happenings, the, the story of our band, you know, how we came up with the band, all the ups and downs, the struggles that we've been through. Uh, th there has also been a song that we wrote about HIV and AIDS since we are the brand ambassadors of Max. You know, we, uh, there, there is a song that we stress basically on the, the I mean like the, the lyrics basically speaks about uh, a person suffering from the disease. Apart from that, we've been writing a song about the current scenario, what is happening in the, uh, you know, in the current scene, about uh, the gov government manipulating people around. You know, we are being fooled by the government itself. And yeah, f like after that, we've we've been like uh, starting to write about uh, ancient mythologies, Egyptian mythologies, stuff and all like that. It's more about the uh, society, the social issues about life, about death, about the situations in the world, like war wars, for example, just genocides, etc. We write usually about social issues and then some personal, like, you know, issues as well, like whether we see it. Nothing uh, evil, of course. Yeah, nothing <laughs> evil, but like mostly social issues, uh, issues that, like I said, uh, that un people are scared to talk of, like, you know. So about, about let's say uh, there's the, there's there's a song that we wrote uh, in uh, one of the songs from our EP. It's called the Vanguard. Talks about you know people who someone who who questions the present situation of society where we are right now. Even though we're living in the 21st century, there's a lot of shit that's going on, and very few people are willing to talk about that. So stuffs like that. Right. Okay, uh, most basically, um, <clears throat> first and foremost, our music is uh, uh, is generic melodic death metal, which we try to incorporate with uh, a lot of uh, styles and genres, right? So, um, lyrically speaking, lyrically, uh, some of the songs, I do the lyrics, some of the songs, uh, our guitarist Malcolm, his name's Malcolm Lindor, he does some of the lyrics out there. So it also depends on our perspective, right? If he's got an, uh, if he wants to write something which he feels he should write about, that's where he starts writing the lyrics. Then the music comes out uh, simultaneously, and then we start uh, incorporating the lyrics with the music. So uh, from my point of view, what what I write about is basically nature, what people have done to our nature and all, you know, through pollution, through destruction, and everything, maybe wars, wars, all the bad things. Then we also focus on politics, not uh, like general politics actually, 
uh, we look at both sides, whether it's good, whether it's evil. So we don't just look at the bad sides. We, we also look at the neutral sides. So we sing about both sides, both sides of life, both sides of uh, the good things in life, the good things, uh, the bad things in life, those kind of things. Yes, uh, exactly like what I just said, like most of these bands are satirical bands. They will write songs which are a, sat a satire to society itself, right? They will criticize so society or the government or whatever bad thing is happening, right? So like through their music, through their lyrics, that's how they express themselves. That's how they show their music. And if you look at uh, other black metal bands, especially in, uh, in the Norwegian countries, right? Um, these people, their forefathers, they were Vikings. So whatever they focus upon, it would be most basically, you know, uh, their mythologies, their mythologies, which people, which people from, uh, from Christian families won't understand since they might consider them to be satanic. While, uh, while in reality, they are actually singing about their religion through their music. Some kind of folk music using the you know stories since we are a christian band we always uh andres mostly uh christian christian lyrics on me you know we we check out from the bible and all we we go through the bible then we wrote lyrics and all that's only christian only it's all about um it's hope you know when you write lyrics it's all about hope so we want to uh, sometimes when Andy wrote for the song, we try to go through the lyrics and all. I could see there's hope in the lyrics. So people may not understand much about what groaning is. They yeah. can't understand what even the lyrics is yeah. when we when he groaned. So whenever we had time, we go through the lyrics and it's like we know that this lyrics can produce life. You know, can give hope to people. So yeah, I can see that in Andy's, um, especially in his lyrics, what he's writing. So yeah, it's a Christian theme, so it's like giving hope only. Hey, I'm Denise and I'm a reviewer and interviewer at Soundcheck Media. Uh, Soundcheck is an online media where we support, um, we, you know, we support local bands, you know, within the Northeast circle only. You know, thrash music pushes me to like, you know, it pushes me to be, not to be aggressive, but to not really care, you know. Like, thrash metal can be wild, but at some point it, it has really helped me with my life. So, so yeah, uh, but, but in the beginning, the first song which, in, which really inspired me to listen to metal was Manoa, Heart of Steel. Uh, when I was listening to that song, you know, like, when the, when the first time I heard it, tears came to my eyes. So when I heard that song, it kind of like pushes me to not care, like to not like to not be a softy, you know. So that's it. It kind of like helps me. Hi, I'm Yevan. I'm a student of third year. I'm waiting for my results. And uh, I've been a metalhead since I was a teenager. I've been listening to Metallica, Megadeth, Greater, Slayer, and, and the lots of thrash metal. Yeah, I listen to death metal a bit, yeah, of course, but uh, thrash metal is my main influence. Well, first of all, uh, it separates me from the rest of the people around me. I'm my own self, I, I'm not a fake. I'm not afraid to show my, my real self. Uh, but yeah, some people do criticize me for it, but then, but then again, I'm, I feel proud that I'm not afraid of myself, of my own self, and that's what makes me unique. The first band that I really got, uh, got into was Metallica, the song Seek and Destroy. Uh, so I started listening to thrash metal. But I want some. I wanted something more heavy and rebellious in a way. Okay, so I was checking out this band called Creator, and somehow the, the song from the album Pleasure to Kill, Pestilence, it it caught my attention because the lyrics it it sang about uh, 
the evil side of society you know the violence the atrocity and all and through that music i to that song i related the evil aspects of the society i'm living in especially coming in coming from india where you know women are victims against rape abuse molest and heavy metal in some way empowered women to 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 be equal against men to res- uh, reciprocate against you know in society that's how i, I look at metal i turned to metal because my my mom died when i was 17 and uh, i had i had no one to turn to okay, i had my family and all but being a person you need someone to 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 help you go through life and uh, it was a hard time for me and heavy metal was kind of there for me and i don't care what people tell me and uh, regarding the dress of course it is bad to some people but to us metal heads it's it's a identity it's an identity we are part of something which is much more bigger than what the term metal is so yeah that's it it's uniqueness having a concert means you go to a concert and you let out all your frustrations and being in a mosh pit is the place for you to release all that frustrations you hate someone you throw it out in the mosh pit not physically harming anyone but you just let it out you swing your body your hand you bang your head that is frustrations and i mean releasing out your frustrations to me personally like i said before metal music empowers you it uh, helps you to overcome your fears and yeah as a human being i tried listening to other genres but uh, it didn't help me at all let's see uh, the commercial stream the commercial genre as for now yeah, as you can see it uh, it what should i say uh, it should it influence people to 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 lose their self respect kids nowadays are introduced to the bad side of society through that music i won't name i won't name the genre but uh, kids nowadays are introduced to lose that self respect like i said before that's it heavy metal it taught you to be a man it teaches you to be a man to be a person of your own not fake not to be, not to pretend to be someone else and uh, that's it yeah i have no other issues with uh, other musics but metal is for me you know like if they cannot tolerate us then i think you you are the ones who should be living in a cave you know not us we've already evolved to this stage where music uh, music is a part of life itself barring any genre any style of music it is a part of life hell if these people want to criticize uh, metal music why don't they criticize this mtv mtv generated uh, you know like uh, music right now which uh, you know you couldn't see any thing at all in it they just talk about parties they just talk about you know like things like sex and all that stuff that too in very very you know straightforward ways where small kids have access to them small kids can uh, can actually just uh, go to the tv oh look there's nikki minaj oh yeah she's singing about her about her big ass again she's singing about this and that you know a lot of sexual content is there and yet i don't see parents or these very people who who say that metal heads are the uh, bane to society i don't see them complaining about it i don't see them writing uh, articles about it i don't see them you know even complaining about anything which you see on MTV because why that form of music is um it sounds very light it's very accessible to all and it doesn't sound dangerous but if you come to look at it accessible music which is uh, you know which can be accessed to everyone from small kids to to the big adults that is which i would consider to be more dangerous because a lot of people have more access to it while metal music it is not a uh, it is not an easy form of music to get into If you're really into metal music, you are really into metal music. You can't just say, "Okay, um, I'm tired of listening to the Beatles. Let me listen to uh, Cannibal Corpse now." You can't just, you know, when you've never listened to death metal before, you can't just say, "Yes, I love death metal." You have to get into death metal. It'll take you a while. It'll take you a while, but you will not be disappointed once you get into that. 
Personally, I find no correlation between God and music. You know, uh, there are many bands, there are many bands out there which are, which are, you know, uh, gospel, if not Christian music, they are gospel music and they are quite heavy, very, very heavy. So I don't see any correlation, even if these people are singing about their ideologies, ideologies, what they think, right? If you look at even, uh, even the Beatles, there was a time back then when, uh, when uh, they sang songs like Eleanor Rigby and all those kind of tracks, they didn't uh, focus on love or on life, but they were singing about something darker, something darker in life. Even uh, if we look at the downfall of John Lennon, when he, where he considered himself to be Christ, actually, for where, where he actually said that, um, you know, the Beatles were bigger than God, than Jesus himself. So, um, and those guys, I haven't heard any album of them where they played heavy metal or death metal or any kind of music. Yeah, so, so I'm a big fan of fantasy based things like demons and wizards and warriors and and so for, for that reason demonic resurrection was a name that kind of fit you know if you watch the Lord of the Rings there are orcs and there are monsters and there are all sorts of things and it's just a name you know at the end of the day we've never really brought religion into our music much and we prefer to keep it that way it's more fantasy based and less to do with religion We have a logo. If you have seen our logo, so we got we got a lot of shit when when we first announced that oh this is our new logo blah blah blah. Over the oh in the span of a few months, people were messaging us like hey, your band is really nice and stuff. But you know please please change your logo, please change your logo because <laughs> uh, you like the you know, Illuminati, Illuminati logo. symbol. Are you guys Illuminati? <laughs> Stupid kids nowadays, they do a lot of things to just grab some attention. But as far as I'm concerned, so far I've been in a metal band for so long and I've had other friends being in metal bands for so long. We listen to a lot of stuff, but it hasn't influenced us in any way, you know, about like, uh, say, we're going to follow satanic whispers or something just because we listen to metal bands it doesn't mean it does not have any link out there it's just a bunch of stupid kids watching too many movies and stuff like that so they just i think that's it i mean you know there's nothing okay fine you get influenced by music but not in a way that you go against religion just to prove a point well, you know, our world is like that. We judge people based on a lot of things. Like, you know, people see Muslim people say, oh, you're a terrorist. What does one thing have to do with the other, you know? Um, it's the same with metalheads, you know. I mean, there are enough metalheads that don't smoke or drink or do drugs or worship Satan, you know. And also, on that note, I will say that Satanism is a very misunderstood thing. Uh, Satanism is, is like, actually has a lot of good points and people who, you know, don't understand it, obviously will have a misconception about it. So I think people should not really bother. At the end of the day, you judge people based on who they are, you know. I'm a Christian. I go to church every day, every Sunday. And yeah, I play metal music. But the thing is that it all depends. See, you, you cannot like uh, judge a person, you know, like what Mason said, a book by its cover. You cannot judge a person just by saying that he's listening to metal music. He's like a devil worshipper or something. No, it's not like that. Yeah, fine. Maybe you're not used to listening to those type of music. You, all you could hear is like screams and growls. And you know, you might think that, you know, they're just growling and screaming. You know, we metalheads, like, metal, why are we call metalheads? Since we are the, we are the, you know, the small section of people here in Shillong that listen to metal, mu metal music. And metal music is not about Satan worshipping. It's not about... Uh, you know, uh, drug, uh, being addicted to drugs is not about uh, we go out there and we rape people around. You know, it's not about all this, all these shits that happen here in Shillong. See, like there are different people out here. They do all the crap, and at the end of the day, what what happens? We pe we the guys, we the, the the people in the small society that listen to these sort of musics, we are being targeted at. Like for example, there was a case that was uh, that has happened uh, before. Like you know, we were being targeted in the newspapers, in the editor sections. We were being like it was being written down that metalheads are
people, yeah. Satan worshippers, people who do drug abuse, people who are like into all the wrongdoings here in in Shillong. So it's it's not about that. We are like uh, we are just a small section, a small society of like normal human beings, like uh, you know, like me and you. But sometimes I, I say I, I, I'd rather be ignored by the society, you know, because most of them are like, they're more judgmental and stuff like that, so we prefer being alone. <laughs> but yeah, uh, being in that society, it, it really being, you know, when you're still in the teens, doing something, being creative, do sports or music or anything in the form of art, mostly people, they judge, so especially we who play music, especially metal music, they only know that, you know, that we do drugs or we worship Satan or any sort of a thing. It's just that music which is heavy, it doesn't have to be, you know, that way. Generally speaking, um, got like, um, especially, you know, people who have uh, that uh, kind of man mindset, who just like don't want to talk about metal, who hate metal, who don't listen to metal. <coughs> and you know, um, the first time that we play in uh, one of the show, I remember it's near the church. We used to have this community um, week that we used to call. So the last day, so we used to play there. So most of the time people <coughs> will say, because we're from that church, and most of the people are from that church, they used to ask us, do you listen to this kind of music? Or how do you love this kind of music? So we said, well, it's just we like to play. It's just a way of, uh, I mean, everyone has their own opinion to metal music. I mean, they love what people in church love about this um, country type of music and all those things. 